Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday, July 9th, and here we are looking at Tropical Storm Chantal, which has entered the Eastern Caribbean today. And if we look at her here, she really hasn't gotten that much more organized since yesterday. There is a little bit of a new thunderstorm burst over what may be the low-level center uh, just in the last hour or so, but the overall appearance is pretty ragged, and a lot of the thunderstorm development has been associated with outflow boundaries racing off to the west, associated with sinking air in the storm, which is not really a healthy look and uh, outflow is rather scanty on the west and northwest sides and the upper levels uh, really non-existent there and uh, it's uh, largely due to this large-scale uh, trade wind flow that is really just diverging in front of her and uh, not allowing thunderstorms to persist in a deep fashion and allow the low-level circulation to become really well defined uh, the recon plane this morning did find strong winds in there but still rather high pressures at about a thousand and six millibars there is a new recon mission in there as we speak that is hunting for the center and uh, we will have to see what they find. Uh, the location and new strength of the storm will likely be uh, shown by the plane by the time this video is posted. But earlier this morning, the previous recon mission did find winds supportive of 65 mile per hour surface winds for Chantal, which is her current intensity, and a wind gust of uh, over near 70 knots, I believe, in Martinique uh, was measured this morning at an airport there. And uh, the reason these strong winds exist in such a disorganized system is because uh, the trade wind flow is already pretty strong in here with a tight pressure gradient, and if you let thunderstorms go up in an already strong flow like this, a wind gusts over tropical storm force well in excess of that are likely to occur and that's what's happening with Chantal here but she clearly is not your typical 65 mile per hour tropical storm and uh, again because of this trade wind flow keeping her in check and keeping her rather fragile and weak and her circulation really is not as well defined as uh, it usually would be for a storm of this intensity and we'll see what the current plane that's in there finds. She may be weaker than 65 miles per hour now. We will have to see. But whatever intensity she is right now, I think she will stay near that intensity as she moves towards Hispaniola. I really don't see her strengthening much more than this, um, given her ragged appearance and the struggle with the trade winds in the Eastern Caribbean that typically cause storms like this to suffer in this position. Here's the model envelope uh, guidance from this afternoon, and you can see a general west-northwest trend continuing towards Hispaniola. Uh, the model seemed to have uh, overestimated the northward component to Chantal's motion in recent hours, so she'll probably ride the southern edge of the guidance here up towards Hispaniola. And then this is going to become a major flooding event, possibly for uh, the Do uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and possibly eastern Cuba, as a uh, much upslope flow from the Caribbean moves into the mountains and dumps copious amounts of rain, and these areas areas are obviously very flood prone and this could be the area where Chantal deals the most damage of perhaps her entire life cycle in this area so this is something these folks should be watching very carefully and be wary of in about 24 hours she will be coming ashore and flooding will be a problem you can see them the models uh, bringing her a little bit more towards the northwest into the Bahamas and then you can see them starting to bend her back now in towards the southeastern US in the longer range by this weekend in response to the pattern we've been talking about with the trough split developing with a cutoff low over the north Gulf Coast which will help to start pinwheeling Chantal back towards the left towards the southeastern US and anywhere from Florida to the Carolinas could get a potential landfall from this it's still rather ambiguous where landfall would occur in here and what will happen with this part of the track and the reason for that is when you have storms coming over the high mountains of Cuba and Hispaniola these mountains can jerk the storms around due to frictional effects they can cause reformations of the center because they have a habit of destroying circulations which forces them to reform in entirely different locations sometimes and uh, so until we get past this region um, it's very hard to discern what might happen in the longer range because uh, anything could happen in here in terms of exactly where the center ends up and so after she clears the mountains she could be anywhere in this area here and once we know exactly where she ends up uh, then we will likely have a much better idea of what will happen over here and where the United States might get the landfall. It's also possible that the mountains could destroy Chantal's circulation entirely and she could be an open wave very weak in here and uh, really not be a threat for anything in the southeastern US and that is certainly on the table but currently I'm a assuming that she will survive and that uh, her circulation will remain intact and she will be able to start regenerating in this area after she gets back over the water. 
Now here's the GFS as an example to show how this evolution will go and uh, this is at about the 700 millibar level which is probably a good proxy for the steering winds that will be steering Chantal. You can see here in 24 hours here's the system nearing the Dominican Republic. Notice behind her we kind of have an inverse or upside down ridge if you will with a clockwise curving flow coming into the east of Chantal. This will likely help to push her towards the northwest over Hispaniola and the eastern tip of Cuba in towards the Bahamas into the weakness enhanced by this upper low that's hanging around Florida kind of setting the western edge of this Bermuda high here and uh, this whole complex will help push her towards the northwest and bring her out of the Caribbean. If we go forward in time to 54 hours, you can see the GFS showing an elongated area of vorticity, indicating the potential for reformations of the center to occur in here. And again, she could also be an open wave in here. It would be really nice if the mountains uh, just tore this up and it never became anything again. Uh, but one of the reasons I think uh, she will probably uh, survive is because notice how weak the trade winds are in the Western Caribbean compared with this very strong Caribbean low-level jet that is now coming into Chantal from the east, and then the winds are weaker on the back side. And uh, unlike right now, she's embedded in this flow right now, uh, where flow is strong to the west of her and to the east of her. That's not very favorable. But now we have a strong flow that is slowing down in the vicinity of Chantal, which means air is piling up in here and converging, which can possibly help generate thunderstorms for her when she emerges on the north side of the mountains. And that could help her keep a circulation intact or redevelop a new circulation if the old one is destroyed. And uh, right now my forecast assumes that she survives and begins regenerating in this area. Uh, but it is still an option on the table that she gets destroyed entirely. And uh, we will see how that goes as she comes over the mountains. Now if we move out in time here, this long wave trough coming into the eastern seaboard again is splitting off and forms a cutoff low over the north gulf coast and starts bringing Chantal farther towards the northwest and uh, pinwheeling now towards the southeastern U.S. coastline. And if we go up to the upper level winds here, with a low level, low level vorticity, you can see the cutoff over the Gulf and another low to its east over here. And these two lows together provide outflow channels for the storm on both sides. And you can see a ridge to the south, ridge to the north. This is an area that we call a cull uh, that is between two troughs and two ridges, this area of lighter upper winds. This is something that will be favorable for the storm if it is generating convection in the Bahamas as it comes out. If it's generating a warm bubble over itself with convection, uh, this will be a favorable pattern for intensification of Chantal as she nears the United States. But again, if the mountains manage to kill her off, she likely won't be anything in this area. But right now I'm assuming that she will survive the crossing and will be able to regenerate in this pattern that will be favorable for her if she is generating thunderstorms in this area. So this is something to watch for the southeastern United States. This is still uh, about four or five days away until Florida would possibly have to worry about a landfall, probably more than that if she decides to go towards the Carolinas instead. Um, but just keep an eye on what happens after she crosses the mountains. If you see her redeveloping in here, she could become a bigger problem in here, possibly even more of a problem than she was for the Leeward Antilles. So this is something to watch for that area. But for right now, the biggest threat will be for Hispaniola and eastern Cuba as heavy rainfall generated by Chantal will cause a serious flooding possibly in that region and that is where she will likely cause the most damage in the near, in the near term. And then the Bahamas are likely to get the weaker version of her as she gets uh, slightly killed off by the mountains um, and she will be weaker in there. But then restrengthening is possible as she nears the southeastern U.S. this weekend. So that will be something to watch carefully. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.